What do mantis shrimp, boat propellers, and traumatic brain injury all have in common? The answer is cavitation bubbles. Mantis shrimp kill their prey by springing out their claws at extremely high speeds. The claw accelerates as fast as a 22 caliber bullet and reaches speeds of 23 meters per second. These high speeds cause an area of high pressure in front of the claw and an area of low pressure behind the claw as the water tries to move out of the way. The low pressure behind the claw causes the water to instantly vaporize into a gas. To understand why this happens, we have to first look at the phase diagram of water. We all know that increasing the temperature of water causes it to boil and turn into a gas. However, dropping the pressure also does the same thing. As you lower the pressure, it reaches a point where the water will start to vaporize into a gas, regardless of the temperature. This can be seen by putting water into a vacuum chamber. As the pressure drops, the water will start to boil even at room temperature. So when the mantis shrimp's claw moves through water, the negative pressure behind the claw causes the water to momentarily vaporize and form little gas bubbles called cavitation bubbles. When the water pressure normalizes again, these little bubbles instantly collapse, releasing a powerful shock wave and heat, which helps to stun and kill nearby prey. A similar thing happens near boat propellers. The spinning blades of a propeller move quickly through the water, creating an area of low pressure on the trailing edge of the blade. This causes cavitation bubbles to form and collapse, which again creates these shock waves and heat. Even though these bubbles are tiny and the amount of energy it releases is small, over time there are enough bubbles collapsing that it can erode even the strongest of materials like metal. So how does this relate to traumatic brain injuries? First, we have to understand that your brain is surrounded on all sides by a fluid called cerebrospinal fluid, or CSF for short. You can sort of think of it like the brain is floating in the skull within the CSF. So say if you received a hammer to the front of the head, well, the inertia of the brain will cause it to collide with the front of the skull. The collision causes bruising of the brain tissue, which is called a contusion. On top of this, the sudden acceleration and deceleration causes different parts of the brain to move at different speeds leading to shearing forces. The shearing forces damage a part of the brain cell called the axon, leading to something called diffuse axonal injury or DAI for short. So when the brain collides with the skull causing contusions and DAI on the side of the trauma, this is called a coup injury. On the other hand, a contra coup injury occurs when the brain rebounds and hits the opposite side of the skull. Like if you're in a car which suddenly breaks, you get this whiplash effect against the seat behind you. That's basically how a contra coup injury works. However, it's never that simple because I wouldn't be making this video if it was. There's a lot of debate on how these contra injuries occur. And a popular theory for this is cavitation bubbles. Scientists think that after the brain moves forward after trauma, it leaves behind this area of negative pressure in the CSF at the back of the head. And as we know from earlier, if the pressure drops in a fluid below a certain threshold, then that fluid will vaporize into a gas and form cavitation bubbles. Just like how mantis shrimp kill its prey, the bubbles collapse, sending out shockwaves and heat, which damages nearby brain tissue. You can even simulate this at home, where you get a glass bottle with some water in it, and then hit the top with a rubber mallet. The water rushes to one side due to inertia, leaving behind a low pressure zone at the bottom. And yep, you've guessed it, forming cavitation bubbles. The bubbles collapse, sending out shockwaves, which break the bottle. What's interesting is that this even happens without direct trauma to the head. A common form of brain injury, especially for soldiers, is blast injuries such as those from explosive devices. The initial shockwaves produced by the explosive device travels through the brain and gets converted to kinetic energy and heat, which damages the brain tissue in a similar way to direct trauma. During World War II, scientists modeled shockwaves with this simple, but not so simple mathematical equation called the Friedlander equation. The model shows that this initial shockwave creates a spike in pressure. However, once that shockwave has passed, there's this period of time where the pressure becomes negative. You can think of it like a spring. If you pull on a spring hard enough and create enough pressure, when you let go, it'll rebound and go beyond the starting position. The same thing is happening here. The shockwave comes and creates this huge positive pressure and then it rebounds into the negatives. And as you now know, when there's a negative pressure in a fluid, it causes the fluid to vaporize, which produces cavitation bubbles. So these blast injuries cause an initial injury from the first shockwave, but then the cavitation bubbles it produces create secondary shockwaves, which cause further damage to the brain. In fact, one study has shown that these secondary shockwaves produce a pressure that's five times greater compared to the initial shockwave. It's important to note that although there's been a lot of theoretical and experimental support for cavitation occurring, it's never actually been directly observed in humans or animals. It's still a theory, but a really interesting and plausible theory with tons of support behind it. The reason it's so hard to study for scientists is because it's a multidisciplinary topic 
that spans the complexities of biology, engineering, physics, and mathematics. Often studies done by physicists and engineers don't have realistic biological parameters, like having accurate CSF flow or brain tissue properties. And the opposite is also true, in that biological studies often fail to account for the complex physics and engineering problems involved. However, in those rare instances, we do get experts from multiple disciplines collaborating. We get cool new medical treatments and technologies that can help millions of people. An example is shockwave lithotripsy, which is a medical device that produces shockwaves that are designed to create cavitation bubbles in the body to break up kidney stones. For traumatic brain injuries, further collaboration between multidisciplinary teams can help solidify our understanding of the role of cavitation in brain injuries so that hopefully one day we can better prevent or treat these conditions. If you got anything out of this video, please consider subscribing. And if you have any topics that you'd like me to tackle in future videos, just leave a comment below. Thank you.